to speak about this project in detail we have none other than ed managing director at sensorm who has been at the helm of drone solutions since past two decades ed brings over a quarter a uh, quarter century expertise of world of aviation having served as airline pilot occupying prom prominent positions in training in human factors within the field in 2013 Ed channels his extensive knowledge and experience into founding Sensorm, which has since flourished under his guidance into one of the premier drone and remote sensing inspection companies. His leadership was pivotal in 2020 when Sensorm was acquired by Aerodyne Group, further solidifying the position in the in the industry. Throughout his tenure, Ed has been at the helm of Australia's most ambitious and expansive drone inspection initiatives. starting from a lot a lot of mining companies critical infrastructure and agriculture the year 2023 proved to be pivotal with the launch of dji dock where ed provided critical support to sensorm team in securing bvrs and remote operations accreditations from the casa ed remains steadfast in his commitment to advancing the adoption of cutting edge drone solutions and remote sensing technologies across various sectors and of course i have achal director at business development from flightbase who will talk about the capabilities of flightbase for dji dock as well as dock drone operations across multiple use cases before we move forward there are a couple of housekeeping rules so please do not forget to share your questions in the chat box we would have a dedicated question and answer session towards the end of this webinar wherein ed and achal would go over them and answer those in detail secondly we would record this session and we would share this with you separately so that you can also later share it with your team and please do not forget to post the favorite moment from your from this webinar over social media with this the stage is set ed over to you Thanks very much. I uh, really appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here. Thanks for the introduction. Um it's great to talk about uh, the developments and challenges with this ex uh, exciting technology. First just acknowledging Dave Knott who's joining us as well. Uh, one of my colleagues, he's our senior remote pilot maintenance controller. He's joining from Melbourne. Um Dave, thanks uh, for being here as well and he'll be running through one of uh, a uh, one of the flights that we'll be showing later on in the presentation. So hello hello to everyone watching it's either live today or via recording um and thanks for the flight base team for inviting me to be part of the dock and roll webinar series so I just want to start a bit of um information about Sensorum before we get into the drone in a box topic uh, for this webinar so Sensorum is headquartered in Perth which is the capital city of western australia we've got staff located all across australia like Dave and we offer cutting edge drone uh, and remote sensing technologies across multiple sectors including utilities agriculture critical infrastructure and of course one of the largest markets in australia mining so we're the largest drone a telco inspection company in australia as well having captured unique data of most of the telco towers across metro regional and remote australia um, across our vast country over the last 3 years and our cloud based software dronos telco is also used by australia's largest telco provider for asset management and digital twin visualization. So Sensorm was established as you guys mentioned in 2013 when the drone industry in Australia was still very much in its infancy. Uh since that time we've spearheaded some of the most substantial and complex drone projects in Australia. In addition to the DJI Dock 1 and now the Dock 2 drone in a box systems, we also have some pretty unique other drone technologies such as the flyability Helios 3, the Valero T NDT drone and the Wintro uh Vitol. Uh, again as you mentioned in 2020 we joined the Aerodyne group um as a subsidiary and we now enjoy the benefits of being part of this uh, global group. Uh what really sets us apart though in Australia is the amount of flight missions that we've completed each year and more so the special approvals that we've obtained from the regulator CASA the Civil Aviation Safety Authority. So in the last 3 years alone we've completed over 40,000 flights um and have been approved for BB loss operations and remote operations via our remote operations center. Uh we've also obtained and maintained our bars for RPAS accreditation uh, adding BB loss. So in our team we've got an expert um group of remote pilots, uh engineers, surveyors, data analysts, project managers 
and we all love a challenge. Um, I think that, that goes for most people who are involved in the drone industry because there are plenty of challenges to be had. So from complex bridge inspections to large scale multi-year telco inspection projects, our mission is always to bring the latest drone and remote sensing technologies paired with unique AI driven uh, software to all industries, very similar to the software that we're using flight based for our um, flight management for the drone in the box. After many years of seeing unique and useful tech come available though, it, I think it really is the drone in a box technology that's sparked our interest uh, and certainly I think will be a focus over the coming years. So the hard work on this particular project that we'll be talking about was recognised in the industry uh, advocacy group by the industry advocacy group, as you mentioned, the award uh, from the Australian Association for Uncrewed System with Sensorum being announced as the winner in March uh, as the industry champion for innovation operations. Anyway, that's enough about Sensorum. So probably best if we launch into the topic, that's the perfect slide uh, to start with. So deploying DJI docks for bird scaring on a grain receivable site, it's a bit of a mouthful, um, it certainly wasn't one of the use cases that I had in mind when we first heard that DJI was going to be releasing a drone in a box solution. Um, and I just wanted to run through some acknowledgements for the project to start with. Firstly, uh, Cooperative Bulk Handling, CBH, as they're known, um, and specifically their innovation team. Uh, their commitment to new and innovative technologies is unwavering. Um, not just in the drone and remote sense, but also, um, you know, they seem to be always working on new tech that's designed to help improve safety and or productivity. So a huge thanks to CBH, the client. We're also very fortunate um, to, you know, let us, you know, to work with some, you know, amazing suppliers throughout the setup phase of this project. Uh, and we continue to work with these suppliers from other, four other drone in a box projects that we have coming up in the near future. So Hobby UAV provided amazing technical writing for the BB loss and remote operations approval with CASA. Uh, ATS Solutions, they assisted with our customs comm setup. Uh, and most importantly, a very robust data pipeline for each site to our back to our remote operations center. And for those that are, are getting involved in um, drone in a box and remote operations, you realize that the data pipeline is one of the most crucial aspects. Elkfish Robotics, um, they're our trusted supplier of DJI drones and other equipment over the last 10 years. Um, they supplied all of the docks uh, for this particular project and also uh, arranged the DJI on-site certification. So a huge thanks to those guys. Flight Base goes without saying. saying um, thanks for providing such a well-designed flight management uh, software solution. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing some information about integration later on as well. Um, and then obviously DJI, they never cease to amaze me with their products. Um, we've got a fleet of approximately 40 uh, or so DJI enterprise drones in our fleet. We've been very pleased with how little maintenance has been required from our initial um, dock one units and we're expecting the same from the dock two units. We can jump to the next slide and just provide a little bit of background uh, for this particular project. So what you're seeing here is a grain stockpile from above taken from the drone with a tarpaulin uh, covering over a bit of that stockpile. So we were approached by the DJI Enterprise team early last year, early 2023, with an opportunity to trial their yet to be released drone in a box technology, uh, the DOC, DJI DOC 1. We didn't know what it was called at that point. Um, as you can imagine, as a long running drone company, always loving new technologies, there was, um, we just, there was no way we were gonna uh, pass on that offer. So um, once we realised and knew that we'd secured that um, technology, then we searched around for, for key clients that we thought would be useful for uh, and to trial. So we arranged a trial with uh, two clients, CBH, who we're talking about today, uh, at one of their grain receivable sites, and Rio Tinto Mining Company at one of their Pilgrim Mine sites. And both trials were incredibly successful and definitely demonstrated the benefits of using this type of drone technology. So. You can imagine in the beginning, those trials were just um, um, EV loss or just normal V loss flying. So someone on site with a controller um, and just testing out the technology to see if the drone would actually take off and land from this small space. Um, so CBH, just some information there about them. They're the largest grain handling company in Western Australia. They absolutely play a crucial role in the region's um, agricultural economy, which is which is so important to us in Australia. The company operates up to 130 regional grain terminals across the Wheatbelt region where all the grain is, um, is stored post-harvest. So one of the challenges faced by CBH and also the other Australian grain handling companies on the east coast of Australia 
uh, it's not just unique to WA, uh, is basically bird damaged, uh, damage to the tarpaulins that cover the grain or open bulkheads. So what you're looking at the moment is, a, is an open bulkhead. Uh, they call them OBHs or bunkers sometimes. Um, they're basically large stockpiles of grain uh, covered by tarpaulins. Birds are obviously a big issue right across uh, the agricultural industry, um, but particularly in this um, in this example. So bird like birds like to chew through the tarp. So as you can see, the grain's exposed there, but once that's all covered over, the birds love to chew through the tarps and access the grain that's stored underneath, which can lead to considerable damage and potential grain loss. So to address this issue, CBH decided to trial the use of drones equipped with speaker systems that admitted a special pre-programmed sound. Um, birds will generally be scared away by a, a, by a drone, um, but, but not scared away enough. Um, it did require that extra speaker and that extra sound. Um, so that had been tested out and proven previously with um, traditional drone methods uh, with someone actually flying the drone on site. So the drones that um, we're currently uh, using uh, and we deployed for CBH is the M30T that comes in the DJI dock uh, drone in a box. Um, they're operated beyond visual line of sight and they're operated from our remote operations center. So the drones and the sounds from the top of the top mounted speakers, they're enough to scare away the birds from the grain stockpiles and it encourages them to move away into the nearby bushland um, that surrounds each site. So this approach aims to kind of reduce the damage caused by the birds, therefore ensures the integrity of the, the grain storage facilities. So we'll just grab the next slide and we'll just talk about the, some of the challenges uh, with regards to deploying to a regional site um, in Australia for those that uh, live in Australia. Um, and I'm sure people familiar overseas, huge areas that are unpopulated, vast distances um, to, to travel to get to some of these uh, more outer regional sites. So setting up six um, remote DJI docks, brand new technology in Western Australia was definitely no small feat. Um, the six regional sites, um, they're around about 250 kilometres or uh, in miles, it's about 155 miles from our remote operations centre. Um, not too far, but far enough. Um, and although the transport of the actual dock itself is relatively straightforward, it was uh, more about the ancillary equipment that comes along, all the support equipment uh, that required careful thought in transport and then set up on site. And what you're seeing here in this image is is one of a uh, one of our, one of the boxes being set up uh, with the fencing and the the four wheel drive in the back. Actually, you can see that there's another dock on there, dock one, ready to head to another site. Um, it also gives you a bit of a an idea of what a um, what a grain receival site looks like and some of the other associated infrastructure. So these these sites are pretty large. They don't just contain uh, open bulkheads. They also have large sheds and and conveyor belts and train um, areas, etc. So for those that have already ventured in the to the drone in a box space, they'd appreciate that the drone in a box equipment is the easiest part of the process. Um, you can buy a DJI dock two now off the shelf, take it home or into the office and set it up and it looks like it's ready to go. Um, but it's the extra equipment that, that, that's required. So specifically the, the comms cabinet that's used to transmit all that data that's been collected um, live and then sending it back to a remote operations centre where that, wherever that may be in the world. Um, so designing a comms cabinet that was suitable for the often harsh conditions uh, in Australia plus setting it up with all the required support, support equipment required some thought. So uh, we're very lucky at Sensorum that we've got some pretty clever mechanical and mechatronics engineers um, that love a good challenge. That word challenge comes up a lot, right? Um, so there were plenty of challenges along the way, but um, very satisfying when we solved all the problems. So there are some drone in a box setup options. Um, there are a number of options that uh, where the components sit on trailers or sleds. However, CBH were wanting something more permanent. So if we just jump back to that previous slide for a second, um, you can see that this, um, this location we've set up with a more permanent or semi-permanent um, um, set up. This still allow the option of moving the drone in a box and comms cabinet to other areas if required over a couple of days. So we had to ensure they had reliable power uh, supply and internet connectivity, which are absolutely crucial for the uh, drone in a box remote flight operations. So 
any of these operations, uh, power and internet. That's uh, one of the one of the keys. Um, thankfully, the technology in both of those, um, particularly with regards to the, you know the latest uh, releases of you know Starlink etc., um, provided very useful. So this sort of phase of the setup told, taught us some very valuable lessons in project planning and execution. Although we've been through this many times with other different projects, um, uh, there are a lot of valuable lessons learned here. And as they say in this industry, particularly, you never stop learning. There's always new technology coming out and new stuff to learn. And I think it's important that um, it required a whole pile of different expertise and different suppliers to get this across the line. Um, not one person knew everything about how to set up a, a new uh, solution like this. So um, we can go to the next slide. So we, we hear a lot about um, not just in drone in a box, but across the industry with regards to um, the BB loss approvals. Um, before anything, we needed to secure these approvals. Uh, it was probably one of the most critical and time consuming aspects of our planning process. And I think that that's probably industry wide. As I mentioned, you can buy the technology off the shelf and put it together, um, but you are not in control of how long the regulator takes um, to provide you with the approval paperwork. Um, and for this, it, in Australia anyway, at the moment, it does take a while. This part of the process was multifaceted, so it involved a number of regulatory and operational hurdles. We, need to, we needed to overcome those before we could even think about starting flight operations. So we needed to secure uh, approval for the remote operations centre in addition to our BB loss um, safety case, um, making the process probably doubly comple as complex. Um, so the re regulator in Australia, CASA, required a physical inspection of both the remote operations centre and also at our HQ, but also had to travel to site uh, to verify that all the safety and operational standards were met. So these visits were crucial for demonstrating our capability to manage BB loss operations securely and effectively. So BB loss operations were available in Australia, but you know this was relatively, still is relatively new, um, operating from a remote operations centre. So the regulator in Australia um, naturally takes a conservative approach to these approvals, and then as a service provider, you, you want to get moving as fast as possible, right? The, You've got the experience, you've got the expertise, you just want to get going. There's the tech, it's on the shelf, I want to go out and deploy it. Um, the positive side of this uh, time spent to get the approvals is that it did give us an opportunity to really work through every aspect of the project in probably more detail than we would normally while we waited for the approval to, um, to be issued. And I think that that was really valuable to this success and instrumental to the success of the project um, overall. So given that BB loss and remote operations from the ROC was new in Australia, still is, as I mentioned, it was we had to make sure our application was really thorough and uh, well presented. Um, we were experts in a whole range of drone and remote sensing um, areas, uh, but again, we're not, um, we're, we don't know everything and we had to go to our suppliers and ask for their advice. Um, so we went to uh, experts in aviation technical writing and they assisted us with producing the SORA, the Specific Operations Risk Assessment, which is a critical document required for BB loss. Uh, the SORA outlines the risk assessment uh, and the mitigation strategies for BB loss operations, ensuring that all the hazards are identified and addressed. And just thinking that this is in the middle of nowhere, not around many people, was not good enough to just push the SORA across the line. Um, the CAS of the regulator treats this exactly the same as anywhere else. So in the lead up as well to BB loss operations, uh, many of our remote pilots, just like Dave, um, although huge amount of experience uh, and qualified across a range of different areas, they had to go through some extra training to prepare them for the BB loss exam. So that's the an extra qualification that they need to add um, to their license uh, in Australia. So in Australia, the regulatory environment for BB loss operations has been traditionally very stringent. Um, remote pilots were actually required to pass an instrument rating exam, uh, which is typically re reserved for manned aircraft um, pilots. Um, but more recently, thankfully, um, and recognising the need uh, for, you know, of drone operations, CASA recently introduced an alternative pathway, which is called the BB loss exam. Still pretty difficult, and I think the pass mark is still around 80%. Uh, so it's still a challenging exam that 
This new qualification basically simplifies that certification process for remote pilots um, and just makes it far more accessible while still maintaining those high safety standards that you would expect for these type of operations. So. Uh, ultimately, um, the BB loss approvals, we got it. Um, significant milestone for Sensorum and our team, um, plus combined with setting up this remote operations centre, which we'll see a photo of that in a second, plus multiple drone um, in a box units. Um, we we're pretty pleased with what we'd, um, what we'd achieved. Um, yeah, so it was a real milestone. So let's go to the next slide. And it's talking about, so this is now into the project. This just gives you an aerial view um, and we're going to see a flight that um, Dave recorded, that Dave conducted and Dave recorded using the flight based software. Um, so this is one of the grain sites um, called Darren. Um, so the daily flights, seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., mostly using pre-programmed missions prepared in flight base. Uh, unfortunately, the birds are not predictable, um, particularly when you're trying to move them away from a really nice, reliable, easy, accessible food source, um, which we've um, been a nuisance and covered over. Um, so our remote pilots took advantage of the manual control options uh, available in flight base, um, together with special methodologies that they that they developed um, to basically push the birds and make sure they remained away from the stockpiles um, throughout the normal feeding time. So the birds aren't coming to these um, grain stockpiles the whole time. They're coming in the morning during feeding time and coming in the evening time as well. So during the middle of the day, it's probably too hot and they, they're sitting in the trees. So the manual control though, it's really important to manage flight paths as well around people on site. Um, it was important that this new technology didn't interrupt the normal site activities. So during peak times, these sites have arriving trains, they've got conveyor belts operating, trucks arriving, front end loaders, maintenance crews, etc. So these are really busy industrial sites. So it was important that we could take manual control um, and then maneuver around people to make sure that we we're being we're remaining compliant. So um, for someone like Dave that's traditionally operated on sticks with a controller, this is a kind of a really unique way. So the interface, which we had with Flightbase, had to be really user friendly to enable that to react really quickly um, to, make, to remain compliant. Also, our remote pilots, when they're not scaring birds, um, they are conducting trial missions um, using, um, so including things like site monitoring, asset inspections, and during the night, um, site security. And we're going to have a look at that site security option in a second. Uh, the site security for drone technology definitely has become more of a focus, um, not just for industrial sites, but across a range of different industries, uh, power networks, water authorities, um, etc. Um, so drone in a box paired with software like Flightbase allows for repeatable, precise flight planning, but also, which is key, is the option for manual intervention when required. So this is not all about just sending a drone off and away it goes. Um, there does have to be the option of intervening uh, when required. Um, so the Mars will jump and have a look at a flight. Um, this doesn't relate to bird scaring. As I mentioned, it's a trial of the capabilities of um, the drone in a box to complete night security options using the DJI thermal camera and flight based software. So Dave, it's uh, over to you. You might be able to just share with us uh, while this is playing what you were doing. Sorry, Dave, we can't hear you. You're still on the other side. Still not. That's okay. Until until Dave gets that up and running, I'll I'll try and explain what was going on in there. Um, Dave can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if I'm saying the right thing or not. Um, I'm not a remote pilot, but um, obviously got a strong interest. So um, essentially, the um, what we've got here is Dave set up a night flight at Darren, um, the site that we saw in that image before, and you can see it's. I think the time down there says about six, almost 6.30. So the sun's setting, you can see the camera that's sitting on top of the 
um, drone in a box to dock one. You can see the sunks just sitting there. Um, Dave's just doing the required checklist. So now we're um, actually looking at the uh, the dock is now opening. Off to the side on another screen, Dave's also got a CCTV camera that's um, giving him a good overview of the whole site. The thing that impressed me about the software and the way it works is just how quickly you can go from putting a flight plan to launching the drone. Um, we're talking in like a minute's time and it's, or it's already sent that flight plan out and the way it goes. So in the software, um, and if you guys from Flightbase can jump in and um, add anything you want here, he's basically activating the payload option. He's got the thermal camera now up, which is from the uh, M30T um, and viewing the, um, that's the open bulkhead and the distance and the fence. Uh, I love the way that you still have the situational awareness of the map up on the top, top right hand corner. Uh, so the site, uh, this grain site was, um, had no people obviously at this time of night. So, um, and then I'm guessing it won't take long before we get um, airborne and, and see what we can see. Right. So let me fill that up. So what we were seeing is a cockpit view where we're getting the entire video feed. Uh, from the thermal camera, and now you can see the drone taking off uh, from yeah. the dock. So that's, yeah, so that's looking across now. This is getting a, a good view of the whole industrial area. Um, and in the distance is farmland, so broad acre farmland. Um, so Dave's now just having a putting an option of a different um, infrared palette up there. Um, and what he's done now, I think, is he's taking over the automated um, flight path that had planned, and he's now taking uh, manual control uh, through through the flyby software. And this is an interesting way if you've got a security issue on site, uh, you've been alerted to that security issue, and you need to go to a particular location, you might use this manual control to just go directly to that point to see what's available. Um, so Dave's cruising across. You can see some of the open bulkheads are full of grain covered with tarps and some of them are actually um, empty. But it's quite an expansive area that we've got to cover. Now it's just changing to um, a different palette, which probably gives a better view of what's going on. And I think it would be pretty obvious if there was a person or a vehicle uh, manoeuvring around this site. Um, I think we do actually, there we go. Now we've got an RGB image there. So you can see that that's what you would be seeing if you're a traditional camera and now crossing across to the thermal um, gives an amazing perspective of what's there. And like I said before, I don't think you'd miss a person or a vehicle um, cruising around site. So on the top right hand corner just there we had that situational awareness of where we were it's got where the dock is located and then where the drone is located in relation to the, to the dock and what the flight path is going to be so you can see here you can easily make out uh, machinery conveyor belts trees etc what i think is amazing uh, for someone that's sitting outside the remote operations center looking in is just how that live view how it's just instantaneous it just comes straight in there's the latency is so low it's um it's just remarkable to think that this drone is flying out on its own 250 kilometers away um so the it just shows you how important that data stream is back and how that integrates into the into the uh into the software so he's done a bit of a lap here of the uh, of the site I think this would be a fairly typical mission um, for site security. So just generally covering the area, make sure there's nothing untoward. Um, again, this is just a manual flight operation, but soon he'll come and uh, return to home. Which I don't know why, but it's my favorite part of the whole process, the returning to land, uh, the view that you get coming back into the dock. It's, um, it's, a, it's a remarkable um, part of the flight process. And I find it really useful that the information that's provided on the top of the flight base software as well, just, you know, what settings you've currently got, um, if you're recording, focus mode, etc. So it's changing from RGB back to thermal.
So traditionally, the drone pilots are used to being on site with a very small controller uh, operating a drone, even if they're operating at night time. Um, now they've got this information on a huge screen if they choose. Um, so the awareness of what they're seeing and the ability to detect things is, um, is definitely significantly easier. If that was a cold night um, out there on site, um, they'd be sitting in the air conditioned comfort of the remote operations center um, doing these missions. Uh, interestingly, you can once this drone's landed, he can take the next drone up at another site that could be 100, 200, 1,000 kilometres away and conduct um, a very, very similar mission. So we can skip to the, if you like, skip to the towards the end. I do want to see the drone coming back into, into land, my favourite part. So that just gives you back, um, yeah, so we're coming back now to, you can see that the view at the bottom is the camera that's set up on the actual dock and the view from the top is from the, the payload. And then you've got this great situational awareness of the site. So the actual drone in the boxes on that map is actually underneath those um, two boxes on the right hand side. And over two, two and a half thousand flights that we did in the first three to four months of this project, um, it nailed it every time. Um, if it was a bit windy, it was uh, there was some excitement coming from the remote operations centre, um, but uh, it nailed it every single time. The, the the box opened, the box closed, tucked it away, charged it up, uh, and kept it safe and ready for the next um, for next mission. I think we'd all agree that uh, two or three years ago that this would have uh, would have been just a a dream. So obviously with every project, um, as seamless as it as we probably make it to look, uh, there's always operational and regulatory challenges throughout the project. Um, so you know there are some things that have to be continuously monitored. Um, you know the things that most of the things relate to any drone in a box project, but there are some things that were particularly unique about this uh, project. So manned aircraft is something, drones and manned aircraft do not go well together. Um, the regulator doesn't matter where, where you are, what country, that's obviously the major consideration is how do drones interact with manned aircraft. These, um, going back to the SORA, one of the main considerations is how we manage manned aircraft. So the chances of a manned aircraft being around these sites is incredibly low, uh, with m most of the sites selected um, being around about um, 100 miles uh, from, the, from the nearest regional airport. Um, and, uh, you know, the small dirt gravel strips that, you know, near to a couple of the sites, um, they were rarely used um, throughout the year. Um, is the no town was issued. Uh, no, not, not sharing at the moment. Just give me a moment. I think there was some internet disruption. We're back. All right. Apologies for that. No problems. You both back. So yeah, just um, obviously manned aircraft, manned aircraft interaction um, is crucial. So as part of the regulatory process, a no TAM was issued. It was required by CASA for the approval, um, and that ended, actually ended up being incredibly valuable. As um, as as luck would have it, um, the military actually started low level training exercises right through some of our operational areas, and those aircraft were down as low as two hundred and fifty feet. Um, above the ground and our operations were at 240 feet. Um, I, you couldn't believe your luck. Um, so our remote pilots though, in our ROC, they maintained VHF com, uh, contact with the approaching low level military aircraft. Um, those military aircraft were aware of the NOTAM, so they understood that there was an operation um, and both made the appropriate calls. Uh, when our remote pilots back in uh, the ROC, uh, once they heard them coming towards them, they were able to land the drone, wait for them to clear the area and then continue on with the mission once they'd cleared. Um, so this really validated uh, our on-site comm setup and obviously the remote operation center flight procedures. 
uh, not something that we thought we'd ever actually um, use. Um, some of the other um, issues that we had to be aware of uh, was just the protection of um, birds, which seems odd. Um, bird scaring, uh, most of the birds on site, that was appropriate. Um, however, in Western Australia, particularly, we have this really unique and amazing protected bird um, that, that live that sometimes lives around these grain uh, sites um, called the black cockatoo. Um, so the imagery that was coming through to the pilot on the remote operation center screens was so huge and um, got such good awareness of what different bird species were. When they spotted this particular bird, they were able to um, cancel the mission, uh, return back and then record that identification the bird had been seen. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty amazing experience. Um, there's, you know, there, um, it's important that we protected that um, that bird. Um, so being able to actually see them on the camera live from so far away and being able to land um, was, was really satisfying. Uh, weather, that's another big issue. Um, it obviously poses a threat to any drone operation. However, normally a remote pilot on site can easily assess the weather. They're on site, they can feel the temperature, they can feel the wind. However, when you're in a rock, the remote pilot's relying on other tools to assess the weather. So. Um, the, the dock has excellent weather monitoring and combined with online apps like Windy that most people would be familiar with, um, plus the predicted wind strength at different levels in the flight management software, the remote pilot's always able to get a really clear picture of the overall weather conditions. In fact, um, I'd say even maybe even better than actually physically being on site. Um, so over the first three months of the project, um, the six Dock 1 units deployed experienced a huge range of conditions from temperatures at 46 degrees Celsius. So that's for those that talk in Fahrenheit, it's about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, through to major thunderstorms with heavy rain. Um, both the hardware, um, the, the docks and the comms box managed um, really well in those um, conditions. Uh, maintenance wise, fantastic. So I suppose the last challenge was the major challenge was the situational awareness. So feedback from the remote pilots, um, you know, was that the situational awareness around normal site activity actually ended up being easier from a rock compared to operating the drone from site because the rock has large screens, it's quiet, it's comfortable uh, environment to work in. For takeoff and landing, they've got high resolution cameras that looked over the site in addition to the camera on the dock the camera, FPV camera on the drone. So these additional cameras enabled really good awareness of people and equipment coming around the fenced off areas, um, particularly during takeoff and landing. So we obviously had the normal signage and, and fencing required. So just jump to the next slide and have a look at our remote operations center. I'm moving at them, there we go, thanks. So we designed our remote operations center to allow information to be easily accessible. There are, there are plenty of ways that you can set up a remote operations center. Um, you know, as, as the more docks we deploy, the larger the, the center will become. Um, but the information had to be really easily accessible and be also a comfortable environment because, you know, typically remote pilots, uh, drone pilots are standing out on site with a drone. There are periods where they're moving around, they're charging batteries, um, but that's not possible in a remote operation center. Now, remote pilots sitting in one position um, for long periods of time. So, we, we, you know, the remote setup was set up, you know, with numerous backup options regarding power, internet. We needed to also consider um, how we would manage flight operations, live operations, if we had to evacuate the remote operations center. How, how do you then land the drones um, if you need to get out because there's a, a fire or there's an evacuation of the building for another reason. So we had to incorporate that into our application process with, um, with CASA uh, and then we had to demonstrate that process um, during their on-site visit that I mentioned before. Um, so we're currently operating our drone and box units as one-to-one -one operation, so one pilot to one drone. Um, however, with the increase in popularity of this technology, as, uh, as, as you guys know at Flightbase, um, the popularity is increasing um, every day. Uh, but for it to remain cost effective to the clients, one to many operations need to be opened in the future. So uh, we're working on this process now, the one to many. Um, this will be a really exciting development in the near future that we'll be announcing. Um, so prior, during and post flight, we need to have communications with people on site, mainly those that are just simply curious. You can imagine people love coming up to the fence and finding out what on earth just happened, where did that drone come from? Um, so setting up comms between 
uh, where the pilot sitting is. You can see our remote pilot sitting at the desk there, having comms between um, the re remote operations center and then um, the people walking around on site was really crucial. So um, it was interesting to see people's reaction when the box started talking to them in the middle of nowhere, um, to asking them to move away. That was that kept me amused on, on numerous occasions. So um, yeah, it was, it was good fun. So just down to our um, last slide about this project, um, probably the most important part uh, for us is just um, the success of the project and then obviously the scalability. So the project obviously was very successful. Uh, we achieved the outcomes that we set for ourselves plus more. Um, for this project, um, it continues, it expands, which is fantastic. Uh, we'll be focusing on trialing uh, more or, uh, regarding the other use cases, not just bird scaring. Um, we've already completed two and a half thousand flights safely with high quality BB loss operations. Uh, and that's just for this project um, alone. So it, it's, it's demonstrated that right people, right attitude, right technology, including hardware and software, um, the drone in a box can be um, very useful across a vast range of different industries, um, areas where tre drone technology was useful, however, not necessarily cost effective. Um, we need to now see that this new tech is a game changer. Drone on mine sites, rail yards, port facilities, etc. So in addition to the one to many operations, it, it's important that the flight management software, in this case, Flightbase, allows for other software integration. Um, so we're really pleased to see what um, Flightbase is doing in this space. And we'll stand by after uh, I finish talking um, to hear from you guys about what's, what the, what's coming up. So finally, the release of the DOC2. Um, you can see in this here, we're already testing out the DOC2 on these sites. Um, so DOC1 and DOC2. I've, I'm, I've, got a, I've got a soft spot for the DOC1. It's done so well, um, but I'm excited for the DOC2. Um, the smaller footprint will enable uh, deployment on sites where clients have previously expressed a bit of concerns with the size of the DOC1. Uh, but the DOC1 has proven that drone in a box is, a, a drone in a box is definitely here to stay. Um, and, and it'll probably be the biggest and most positive change in the drone industry for some time. Um, thanks very much for uh, letting me run through this project. Awesome, hey, great. That's... Great to learn about the success of the project. It was very insightful and very informative. And I already see a lot of questions popping up. People found it very interesting and very novel as to how docking stations are being used for a use case this novel. So towards the end of the session, we'll take all of those questions. Now, Achal, over to you to present flight base and help us understand what we bring to the table. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, Ed, for that presentation and sharing that data. Really insightful. So let me jump in here. Uh, Rahul, if you can, I can share my screen really quick. Uh, can I share my screen and let me know if you can see that. Yes, it's visible. Okay, great. So let's dive deep into flight base. And the whole idea here is how do you make your DJI dock enterprise ready? As you're deploying these kind of operations for various use cases, and today we'd be covering agriculture. Let's get a background of what are the core components that are required for these operations to happen at scale with all the integrations and the use case uh, we need to uh, cater to. So when we are looking at uh, deploying docking station it's not just drones and docks there are so many different components as ed shared right what about b loss payloads uh, it could be loudspeakers parachute if you're doing security kind of deployments you want to integrate alarms you want to have situational awareness on the site where there could be people passing by and need to uh, talk to them uh, there are data processing software flight management software and so on all of these components need to come together for autonomous drone operation, which was not the case before when we were doing just manual operations because we always had somebody flying the drone on the field. But since we have moved to a remote operation and autonomous operations, there are so many components that need to come together to uh, build an enterprise grade solution. And that is where Flightbase provides the glue or the centerpiece where you can plug in all these components that you need for different use cases be it like construction, security, or agriculture, the way we saw uh, at the site uh, where Sensorum has deployed the docking stations. 
So Flightbase is the enterprise drone army platform which provides you different uh, puzzle uh, pieces uh, that could be uh, put together uh, to create a solution. So a more uh, detailed diagram would help you understand more about how you can piece up all these pieces together like drones, docking station, payloads. So you can bring any kind of drone dock. We saw dock one, dock two has now come into the market. You can use a combination of these drones and docks and flight base could provide you the entire flight, flight automation, fleet management, one-to-many operations, flight safety, as well as the data security layer, uh, complying to all the rules and regulations. And you can also extend the capabilities with uh, integrations with uh, different software. So be you're doing a mapping or doing a crop monitoring system, you can send the data directly using flinks. So flinks are flight based links which allow you to integrate your current operations with your software that you could be using previously. People have been using say drone deploy or PIX4D can now integrate uh, that software with flight base for automated drone operations as well as uh, the data processing. Similarly, if you're using something like uh, security, you could integrate with a video management solution. So we'll see a few examples down the line as we uh, explore the agriculture use case. But this is the crux of the flight based platform where you can bring the right hardware for the, that use case as well as flight based will provide you all the pieces uh, which, which you can plug them together to create a solution for your use case. So looking at three value proposition that we that bring on the table, the number one is enterprise integration. So we're going to talk about that. Second is flight safety and third is data security. So when it comes to enterprise integrations, uh, the thing that enables that is flinks. And as I said, flinks is short for flight based links, which are connectors to enable one click integrations between flight based and external apps, devices or modules. So there could be different type of flinks where you could be integrating alarms on the side. These could be motion sensors, fire sensors, uh, computer aided dispatch systems. Data processing flinks, which could be AI based processing solutions, live streaming flinks, uh, data, uh, integrating something like a video management system, or things like mission and logging, detect and avoid a UTM for your beam loss or compliance. Plus, we also offer automations. Automations uh, allow you to create flows which are entirely automated. So, say if you have an alarm on the side, if that alarm gets triggered, you can send an automation, set an automation where you can send the drone to that alarm location automatically and you get alerted on your dashboard when that operation happens. So based on your operating procedures, you can create these kind of automation workflows inside flight base uh, and have uh, an action to a particular trigger that has happened on the site. Second, of course, is flight safety where beam loss is, of course, uh, required for these kind of operations. So Flightbase provides all the core modules which are required to make your operations safe. Be it like setting up fail safes, no fly zones, geofences or dynamic path planning. We also provide the entire certification and compliance for enterprise operations be it ISO 27001, SOC 2 type 2 or GDPR. These are typical IT standards which are uh, required for enterprises to get these docs on the site and make sure that data is secure. We also offer added flexible deployment options. So any customers who are very particular about having entire system on premise or be it on an air gap system where they do not have access to internet or they want it to be completely isolated, uh, flight base could be deployed on those kind of systems as well. So let's move to the topic of agriculture and see some operations as well as what are the core components to create different kind of solutions for agriculture. <coughs> so, when we look at typical use cases, as Ed also shared, we were looking at bird deterrence or on the crops, it could be fish farms. We are also talking about site security. There could be another use cases where you do cattle counting. And fourth is, of course, the crop health monitoring, where there could be uh, fields like cotton fields or any crop that you're growing and you want to continuously monitor. So if you're looking at these kind of use cases, what are the core components that Flightbase could offer, uh, which you can bring them together to create a solution. And let's uh, take a deeper dive into that. So let's pick up bird deterrence. And as shared by Ed, uh, there are certain integrations which are very valuable. 
be it loudspeaker and spotlight. So Flightbase offers you that integration where you could have a loudspeaker or a spotlight and you can remotely control that through the dashboard. It offers an intuitive air, uh, interface to control that loudspeaker, send an audio message or it could be a spotlight that you want to turn it on during the night time to get that video feed uh, from the RGB camera. Secondly, one is you can of course fly the drone using the on-screen buttons, but as uh, this is being done remotely, uh, remote operators require a sophisticated hardware interface to control the drone. And that is where we have integrations with uh, joysticks like Thrustmaster 16000M, which is a very professional joystick which could be used to control the drone. So you can precisely move the drone, the camera, the gimbal to look around as doing as you're doing these kind of operations. You can of course integrate your uh, joystick like Xbox controller, PS5 if you are looking to fly drones with that. So Flightbase offers agnosticity with this as well where you can plug in any USB joystick and then you can configure it uh, through the dashboard to fly the drone. You can also do mission scheduling where you can create the entire calendar where drones can fly on scheduled missions uh, and you can also set fail safes in case of uh, uh, weather conditions or you have data from a detect and avoid sensors. These scheduled mission can automatically be canceled or can give you the warning. So with the flight safety as well as scheduler, you can plan these missions safely uh, and schedule them for your operations. Then you can also have waypoint trigger uh, actions where you can set a particular action on a waypoint and it could be like triggering certain sounds on particular waypoints. And we provide an intuitive dashboard where you can configure actions for every waypoint uh, where you are doing these kind of operations. Second, let's look at site security and explore some of the features and flight base and integrations which can help you with the site security. So the number one is alarm flings and this is very popular where uh, when you are deploying these kind of docking stations, customers would like to integrate their sensors on the site so that you can send the drone based on the alarms or the triggers which are coming from those sites. As well as you can do the entire alarm automation as we discussed where whenever that alarm comes in, you can either set a manual response where you'll get the notification and the remote operator can send it. Plus you can have an automated response where drone would automatically respond to that alarm uh, and you get all the alerts in your command center. You can also integrate live streaming flings so you can send an RTSP or RTMP video link uh, to a third party video management solution. Now this is where you could have a command center as well as there could be a security system set on a customer side where they want to also see the live video feed along with their CCTV cameras there. And that is where integrations with software like Milestone is very valuable where you can create that multi-cam video feed uh, where you could have multiple cameras coming along and create that kind of video feed. So it could be CCTV cameras, other cameras on the side. It could be cameras that you set up uh, around the docking station to safeguard uh, the drone operations as well as the live video feed uh, from the drone cameras. So integrations with these video management solutions allow you to create these custom views, not just for uh, your drone operations, but of course for the customer as they would be having their own uh, command centers or security center where they could be looking at CCTV camera footages. So very useful and this flink allows you, allows you to have these kind of integrations. <coughs> Next up is Panorama. So Panorama allows you to create an entire panoramic view of that site. And this is very useful for again security use cases where you can get a broader understanding of how was the site at that particular point where there could be multiple uh, areas that you want to see. So Flightbase allows you to have these kind of panoramic captures and then see it in the flight logs. Then you also have uh, the option to have AI detection. Now this is very useful in of course security where you could fly the drone and you can detect something like people, machinery, vehicles and so on. So in this demonstration, you can see that the operator is just sending a drone to a particular location. You can see that there is a dock here and the operation is just getting on its way where you have the live video feed coming from the dock camera like we saw in the previous videos. And 
you can see the drone taking off and now you can get this directly video feed process through an AI engine that is provided by Flightbase. So in the interest of time, I'll just move to the takeoff time where the drone takes off and we see the live video feed. And now the same video feed that we are seeing is being sent to an AI engine and then you're getting that process directly where you can detect, count, get alerts on the dashboard. So this is something which Flightbase has been offering to a lot of partners and we'll be rolling out it to different customers uh, by end of this month. So this is an added, added assistant because, uh, assistance because now you could fly the drone and instead of manually looking into that particular area, AI would assist you and send you alerts and also captures those screenshots uh, and save it to the gallery so you can review it later. Moving to the case of AI cattle counting, there have been a lot of use cases where Flightbase has deployed the entire system uh, so you can detect or count cattle and that is where grid mission planners comes really handy because you can scan that entire area create a auto mosaic or capture pictures and then run it to the same ai engine to detect animals and that is where ai would be very useful so you'll see a lot of updates coming up in next few weeks in the domain of ai from flight base uh, and these features would be rolling out Third is crop health monitoring and there are a lot of good softwares available in the market which already cater to processing the data from an agriculture farm and that is where data processing flings come into the picture where you can plan your entire safe weave loss missions using flight base, collect the data uh, with all the safety and reliability, plan different kind of missions for, for the dog operation and directly sync that data with a third party software to create an auto mosaic uh, or a digital twin and process the data using uh, softwares like drone deploy, Pix4D and so on. So I'll play a demonstration video where you can see how this integration works. So this is an integration with our partner drone deploy where we can plan the entire mission using flight base like you do for uh, any other operations. You can be site security, bird deterrence, but maybe now you need to uh, manage that entire area and create a 3D map. So you can plan that entire mission. So you can see you can have the entire grid. Uh, you can plan it on the side. You have all the functionalities on the left panel to set the grid angle, speed, uh, the overlap that you want uh, to capture that complete uh, site. And uh, you can tag that site and deploy the drone. And you can, with the dock too, specifically the new drone and dock, it's really good for mapping uh, with the global shutter camera on that drone. So you can see Again, that same view coming from the dock, but this time this is DJI Dock 2, and you can see the drone being launched and sent to that particular location. So this is just for fast forwarded and we're doing the camera capture, but the real magic would happen where it, we could send that data to a processing software and uh, get that data processed to create a 2D or a 3D map. So as this is done, now, of course, Today, we do not have something like Flink. You'd have to manually download the data or connect that bucket uh, where you have stored the data to a third party software. Maybe you might need to do some modifications so that software could accept that. But now with the Flink, all these integrations with uh, softwares like Drone Deploy, you can just click a button. All of that data is being sent and you can see that there is a 2D map already created in the Drone Deploy. Similarly, if you're using any other software, data processing flings allow you to create these kind of 2D or 3D map directly for your dog operation. So no longer going on the site, flying the drone, taking out that SD card uh, out and then coming back and processing data. All of that could be automated with the software of your, of your choice that you could, would be already using for processing your data. And all of this, you can get started for free with Flight Base Zero. So you can get started today. Uh, you can just go to flightbase.com slash pricing, contact uh, Flightbase or Sensorum if you're looking to get your dock operations ready uh, with Flightbase. So that's it from my side. Uh, this just last piece that I want to share before I close uh, is Flightbase Academy. So in case you're looking to learn a lot like this, we have all these courses available online. Just go to academy.flightbase.com and there are several courses available here to learn about flight base, dock operations, as well as previous sessions like these. So with that, let's open up for Q&A uh, and get those questions answered.
Thank you also for your presentation. It was quite detailed and helped everyone understand how the different functionalities can serve its purpose for multiple use case and not only agriculture. And even in agriculture, what are the different avenues wherein the docking stations can be used? So with that, I see a lot of questions popping up both for Ed and Achil. So there are a few questions that are initially for Ed, which uh, I'll share with you. Ed, so beginning with the first question right now, has SensorM, have, uh, has SensorM garnered any experience in scaring away pied cormorants in coastal townships or Oh, it's is the project only targeted for uh, scaring away birds at granaries? Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I, this project really just demonstrates that, and you guys can hear me okay, I presume? All good? Yeah, so the, I, this project is just not isolated to um, bird scaring. Um, the bird scaring component probably relates more to the speaker and the spotlight on top. Um, this technology can be deployed across a, a range of different industries in a range of different areas. The only com the only difference in the complexities is if you're deploying this sort of technology in in Australia and New Zealand, for example, in built up areas, it's going to have its challenges with regards to beyond visual line of sight operations, as you would expect from any other drone operation. So, you could take the setup that we've got that we've used out on these grain receival sites and put that on a mining site. You could put that on a coastal town, you could put that on a rail yard and it would operate exactly the same way that we've seen um, out on those grain terminals. So it's just easily transportable or replaceable to a, a different um, industry or sector. Understood, uh, that's a great answer of how it can be applied for multiple use cases. And a follow-up question to that was, are, the, are certain spe uh, species of birds not scared by drone or do, do you need to fly very close to them or do you need to perform certain tactics to scare them away as per your experience? Yeah. Very good question. Pigeons. Pigeons don't seem to be very concerned with drones or sounds or anything. Um, pigeons are really um, stubborn birds. Uh, otherwise, other than that, um, it, most birds are, are scared away by drones. Um, some drones, obviously, you know, typically we hear about, you know, drones and birds, particularly birds of prey in Australia. They love to um, attack um, drones, uh, but it does certainly help to have a speaker on top that's emitting uh, an uncomfortable sound um, does add to that. And we haven't had any issues uh, with any birds going for the drone. Um, but yes, to answer the question, pigeons are really stubborn. And another question is uh, related to CASA rules. So is this CASA approval that you received or in general for Australia, is it a blanket certificate or do you require a risk assessment or site survey for every project? Like if it's a mining project or if it's a separate agriculture project, you would require a different certification. So is that the case with new clients? Yeah, so um, yeah, that's a, that actually, that is a fantastic question um, because as I mentioned, the the approvals are the most time consuming. Um, and if a client says, hey, I want to trial or I want to roll out a drone in a box solution in two months time, uh, the answer at the moment is, well, we need to wait for six months because of the CASA approvals process. We've got some ex super exciting news coming through um, from Sensorum, uh, which I can't reveal today, but it, it will definitely um, shorten that process down from months to literally uh, a matter of days. Um, so that's some exciting news that we'll be um, talking about soon. But it's all about the SORA. You still, doesn't matter what happens, you still need to put that SORA in and do that safety case um, just to make sure that you're aware of manned aircraft um, activities and also ground risk. Um, so obviously some of these things operating in remote areas, a mine site particularly where it's quite controlled makes um, life easier. Um, but at the moment, um, the approvals process with the regulator is quite um, slow. It's not complex, it's just time consuming. Thank you, Ed. Th I'm looking forward to the great news that is on the way from SensorM. So there are a couple of questions for you, Achal. So I'll get started with the first one. Yes, so this is in regards to the scaled operations. So Ed mentioned about the current operations being one-to-one. -one. And at this stage, there are those pilot projects or those initial projects which are going on, which has one to two docks. 
but actually what about if the scale of the project started starts increasing and there are 10 plus docs or let's say there are 50 docs and there are only a few operators who are overseeing so how does flight base cater to that right so of course we need to move really fast in technology so we can show that uh, these operations are safe and of course there is a regulatory aspect as well to the, these kind of things as well right so uh, at flightbase we have already created a solution where you can do one to many operations uh, and get started where you could have multiple drones deployed and managed through a dashboard we have already introduced that we are taking it to the next level in next few months where you could have the entire deconfliction so today you could have a drone on a site with its own geofence and no fly zone and you could have multiple drones deployed on different sites. Flightbase offers site management as well as it offers role based access. So certain people in your team has access to that fleet. And then you also have team huddle so you can coordinate with the team as you are doing these operations. So we are creating a lot of tools uh, for remote operators so they can have these kind of operations done as well as they can prove it to the regulatory authorities that what are the standard operating procedures and get their risk assessment done as they do these operations. Next in line, of course, would be integrations uh, with detect and avoid systems, uh, having integrations with uh, uh, having the systems with deconfliction, so you can fly two drones in the air and flight base ensures that you cannot collide those drones and you're all safe. All these things are going to come in the future. But if you want to get started today, the technology is already there where you can use multiple drones and multiple sites and use a single dashboard to manage all those operations. All right. Thank you for that answer, Achil. And this last question would be regarding the AI detection piece. So you heavily mentioned about Flink and how Flink enables integrating and bridging flight base with any existing vertical specific application. So the AI detection piece, is that a Flink integration or is it something which is inherent in the flight base platform? Right. So AI integration would come inherent uh, where there are so many AI softwares available, but these systems are not designed for drone operations or moving cameras. So that is where Flightbase is taking a step ahead to bring uh, those modules inside Flightbase, which has been trained and has been designed to cater to aerial use cases. So that is something which should be coming inherent. But of course, if you have your own AI based system, you can use a live streaming fling or a data processing fling to send that data directly to your software and have your own system doing the AI analysis. So both the options are available and that's the beauty of using a platform rather than an application, right? So platform allows you to have those kind of APIs and access so you can configure that entire solution uh, that you need for that use case. Thank you, Achal. So with this, we move towards the closure of this session. So before we end this, Ed, any closing thoughts, anything you want to share in regards to the future of drone in a box solutions in the coming few months and years? Look, I think it's um, an ex it's exciting technology. Um, like I said before, it's definitely um, probably the biggest technological change in the drone industry that we'll see for, for some time. Um, and it's 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 about getting the stars have aligned with all of the technology so the 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 um, satellite technology the live streaming the hardware the software the stars have aligned and it, it's now making it um a, a real thing that can be deployed it could be cost effective and it's going to be solving lots of problems across a lot of industries great that's what we think as well and anything to add uh, to that actual from your end what are you seeing in the coming few months Absolutely. So uh, last 12 months have seen uh, shown us the glimpse of what could be done and we saw another case study today. And of course, this is just a scratching the surface. There's so much that could be done with this technology, with the integration and the entire ecosystem. Uh, everything could go 10x easily where the kind of data processing we used to do with the drones. Now, since we have a hardware sitting on the site, you can use it for multiple use cases as well as collect the data on demand. So it, it is like a flying robot, right? It, it is up to the user how you want to use it. So there will be multiple use cases that we would explore. And uh, we are, of course, there to support uh, end customers, our partners with the entire platform. So 
that is where we see and with the beam laws getting sorted that's a good news right and things that the efforts uh, companies like Sansaram are putting to get there with all the standard operating procedures it would become very easy for the end users to adopt this technology so really helpful uh, hopeful for next 12 months and I would like to also thank Ed uh, for taking our time uh, to give us the entire overview and that was quite insightful as I said earlier so thank you so much Ed uh, for making it to the webinar today uh, and of course to Dave unfortunately he could not connect there were some issues but yeah thank you so much uh, to both of you to take our time sure. and uh, share your experience with the entire audience today oh, it's a pleasure and thank you to the flight base team as well thank you guys and thanks everyone out there for watching Thank you so much. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.